Beth, uh, people who believe in uh, religion, believe in God, generally do it for one of two reasons. Either they have some logical arguments that they use, and that's a very small percentage. The vast majority of people who believe do it on the basis of their own religious experience. So some may talk about miracles, but generally it's some internal religious experience. People have told me that the only way I'm going to find God is by having a, an experience. And my reaction to that is, A, I've never had it. But even if I did, I wouldn't trust it. The work that you've done on false memories reinforces my sense that uh, religious experience is a very dangerous way to try to apprehend something that's real. So help me un understand what you've done with implanting false memories and how that might uh, uh, help us to understand the nature of religious experience. Well, I'm not quite sure I understand how someone has an experience that they decide is a, you know, a miracle or some religious epiphany uh, that then connects them or makes them or encourages them to be even more religious. But if somebody thought that they witnessed something that they want to call a miracle, I'd really want to know a whole lot more about what happened because did they really see something? Uh, did they imagine it later on? Did somebody suggest something to them, somebody who already was religious, suggest something and now they're seeing it uh, through that filter of suggestion? That these are, are the processes that can lead people to believe that they've you know, witness something miraculous when in fact uh, they really didn't. So if they are taking an experience, you know, a false experience and then deciding to run with it, um, I mean, well, that'd be interesting in and of itself. Well, with, with, with a motivation, because they have a motivation to want to believe for various reasons. That, that's understandable. I think most I would want to, want to believe, but I certainly don't want to fool myself. So uh, what's, what are some examples that you've used in, in false memory that can help us to understand the process so that where somebody might have witnessed or thought they witnessed a miracle, that same thing may have been happening. So let's understand what you've really done and examples, and let's see if we can apply it. So I can get people to uh, believe and remember uh, that they got sick eating egg salad sandwiches. Uh, I ply them with false information about themselves. I get them to imagine uh, the process of getting sick and not liking the sandwiches. And, and later on, they believe that they had this experience and they don't even want to eat th this kind of sandwich as much. Um, so, so we can apply that. So if, if, I, if I told you we want to have an experiment to, to convince somebody, you know, this is a, a mean and malicious thing to do and I, I wouldn't want to do it in the real world, but as a thought experiment, that we were going to conspire together to convince somebody that they witnessed a miraculous uh, healing of some, some, of some kind. That somebody was in a wheelchair and then they got up and walked. And so you were tasked to make that person believe in a miracle? How would you go about it? Well, first of all, I mean, I, I suppose you, one easy way would just be to fake it completely and to have them witness somebody who was acting. Okay, so. Uh, I mean, that, a, that, that would be an easy way to do shell, it. Get a shell and you, you have it acted out. And, okay. Right, and that, right. That, that kind of thing that, I think is happening on television all the time. Okay, so, okay, that's. Um, but, but, uh, um, so, for example, let's suppose that um, uh, I was driving along and suddenly I got the urge to just stop my car right on the freeway and I stopped my car right on the freeway and moments later lightning struck ahead of me and killed the car in front of me and it would have been me if I hadn't stopped. Okay. And I, I then decide, my God, that was a miracle. And somebody comes along or maybe my passenger says, and didn't you see that little angel, you know, floating up there right, right before you stopped? That suggestion could get me to imagine and perhaps think that I saw an angel. Mm. 
And that angel beckoned me to stop. So, uh, so the combination of, of some real sequences of events, some real true memories, then uh, uh, amplified by, by people doing e either maliciously or de deliberately, and you do it in your studies deliberately, not maliciously. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the religious world, I wouldn't say people do it maliciously, but they do it uh, deliberately in order to convince people to believe in their belief system. And so the motivations that you have as an experimenter and a religious leader might be very similar to manipulate the, uh, the, 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 the thoughts and the memories of individuals. Well, that's an excellent point, that religious leaders can, can supply those suggestions. Um, I, I want, usually I'm saying that people are doing these things unwittingly, um, accidentally, not, not deliberately, but maybe they would do it deliberately because uh, they have some higher goal in mind. And they're influencing the recipients of this information to believe and remember that they saw and experienced things that they didn't actually see and experience. And, and, and what that means is it's that the person themselves is not saying, well, I believe the person telling me, but they've internalized it so much that they've recreated things in their own mind that, that didn't exist. Right, that could be that they've used imagination and, and actually had, had, have visions or visualizations, or you can do it without that. Yeah, but, but in, in either case, you are reinforcing a, a memory so that it's not just something that you feel obligated to believe, but you, your real internal uh, mechanisms are now, are now locked into that mm -hmm. way of thinking. Yeah, and, that's, and, and there you're off to the races. I, I mean, do you really see that, that, that the, the complexity of, of uh, something like religious belief and what you do on a on a, uh, um, a a micro level, planting very isolated beliefs or, or little hold beliefs, it's the same thing when you do it in in a large belief system. It's one one is writ large for the kinds of things that you do because you what you do is demonstrably sure and scientific, so we know that works. Well, I, I see similarities. Let's put it that way. I see out there in the world of, of these complex beliefs similarities, that there is, uh, there is suggestion, there's repetition, there's authority figures, uh, and, and, uh, and then you've got all these books out there that people can read to remind them that it's all true. <laughs> and the totality of the system, the, whether it's seeing miracles or having a personal religious experience and being told that the whole system then becomes uh, uh, self-coherent. It, you know, it's reminding me when the, when the film The Exorcist, the, the book and then the film The Exorcist came out, uh, and it, it led lots and lots of people to start to believe that they were possessed mm. and that they needed exorcisms, mm. and lots of people to experience the symptoms and to experience the world as a possessed person. Mm. Uh, and that was done with a book and a film. And, and how does that uh, articulate with your work? Is some of the same principles uh, at, at work in both? Right, there's, there's the, the information is provided, there's a suggestion, and you can then convince yourself that this may be true of me.